Rod, this uh, unbelievable uh, recent run of recruiting by Alabama continues. Uh, the Crimson Tide is just, uh, again, I, I don't know if they can catch Clemson or not, but I know this. Uh, Clemson's looking in the rearview mirror. Xavier Hill, the big offensive guard from Olive Branch, Mississippi, commits on Sunday, 6'3", 325, a road grader, really athletic kid for that size. He's commitment number 21, and he caps off uh, 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 quite a recent run for Alabama on the recruiting trail. Yeah, I think he's vastly underrated, Gary. Been saying that for two months now, six weeks, two months, whatever. It, it's Let me tell you, you mentioned 6'3", 325, He's, like you said, athletic. He has that mentality. He's a road grader, kind of offensive lineman that Alabama really seems to be going after. Uh, so I think he fits the mold perfectly for what they want. Um, I'm, I'm extremely high on, on Xavier Hill and have been. He's rated a three-star in case any of your listeners out there follow those types of things. And But but to me, uh, he, he's, he's a lot better than that. Um, and I think he's going to be an outstanding player. Now, listen, uh, obviously it's a long way off. He's being heavily recruited by Texas A&M, Tennessee, uh, LSU's been on him really hard. Mississippi State's still trying to push on him, and those other schools will continue to try to push on him. There's no question about that. But, you know, I think that uh, coming over here, uh, initially he was going to commit to Alabama, I think, on May 24th, and then he delayed it. So I think coming over here for this visit was really huge. I, I think you have to give the Alabama coaching staff uh, a, a kudos for uh, getting a quick commitment from him after this visit. Yeah, I, I'm with you. And uh, he's a guy that, as you said, he's going to continue to be pursued as, as most of these commitments are. That's just the way it is now. But Alabama has 21 commitments, Rodney. And when you look at who's still left, um, you do have to start crunching numbers a, a little bit. Uh, potentially... You know, I'm looking at at a handful of five stars that Alabama's still involved with, uh, a number of four stars. How big a concern are the numbers right now in terms of this this 2020 class? Yeah, well, I think every year that's an issue because you you have a lot of guys that maybe you would like to take, and there's just not enough room now. Like you said, 21 commitments. I think they'll probably sign 26 in this class. Um. You know, but as we always see, there's wiggle room. There's guys that eventually uh, end up somewhere else and, you know, taking visits to other places. And so, I, I, you know, I, how many Alabama that is not on this list, how many can be freed up for those guys, you know, remains to be seen. And I say freed up. I mean, by choice of other guys maybe going somewhere else. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but, uh, I, you're right. There are a lot of guys out there that Alabama remains uh, very, very much in the picture for that are that are highly regarded. And I think uh, your opening comment about catching Clemson at the number one spot, which is what everybody likes to keep score, how they like to follow it. Uh, I, you know, listen, I think this is going to be a great, great recruiting class if they hold together what they've got and then uh, finish it off with some of the guys they, they have in, in play. Rodney Orr with us from TiderInsider.com and Tider Insider TV. Uh, James uh, filled in last week, so you were with him on, on Monday uh, while I was on vacation. But I want to ask you about, again, you know, Alabama's shaping up, I, I think, to have a, a mega class, whether they're one, two, three, whatever the number is. I, I think this class is not only going to be high on talent, but on filling needs. Uh, the game defensively has changed right before our eyes since Saban got here. It's now a game not played in, in the box as much. Uh, linebackers have to be able to run in space, even inside linebackers, but particularly those outside guys. I mean, they got to be able to cover. Uh, they got to be able to drop. They got to be able to rush the uh, the quarterback. Sometimes put their hand in the ground. I mean, a lot is asked of of these outside and inside linebackers. And when you look at this class so far, uh, Rodney, I mean, I, I'm just sitting here with my jaw dropped. Uh, Chris Braswell and Drew Sanders already on board. And then in just the last couple of weeks, you add Quandarius Robinson, Des Moines Kennedy, and Will Anderson. Uh, and, 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 you know, and there are others. I mean, Jack, Jackson Bratton's a longtime commitment. But this linebacking core, uh, whether you call them outside linebackers, inside linebackers, defensive ends, whatever, I don't see how, if this holds up, they can be a better one in the country than this one Alabama's putting together. This is a phenomenal amount of talent. Yeah, it really is. Uh you mentioned those guys, two of those, Dre Sanders, uh, Drew Sanders, I'm sorry, and uh, Chris Bowser are already rated five-star players. I think when you look at Des Moines Kennedy from Theodore, he, to me, he's a five-star athlete. 
I think Will Anderson, and they, they all are a little bit different. You know, they're not necessarily all the same. Can do different things. They, they have a lot of versatility. But Will Anderson, I, I really like him, his frame. He's going to fill out, get big, great pass rusher, tremendous leader. I think the same thing can be said about those other guys. Um, Quandarius Robinson, uh, then some people think he's the number one player in the state. He'll, he'll, he's a, he's a edge five star type guy. Uh, so all of those guys, Gary, I mean, it's, it is an amazing group of, of linebackers and may, you know, grow into even a more amazing group as time goes on, depending on how some of these other ones fall. You know, they're still in on some guys. And, you know, one of those was here. We, we reported he was coming in, uh, last week. Jordan Banks, the inside backer from California. He could play outside, could play inside. Uh, I've watched his tape. He, he certainly makes a lot of plays, too, and um, he's a four-star player. So there's others. Savell Small still on the list, obviously, from Seattle. Justin Flo out in California still you know, giving Alabama some consideration. And, again, it's a long way off. We'll see what happens with those guys. I ask you about the numbers, and, and listen, it, it's a fluid situation in recruiting. Uh you know, there are some guys that are committed to Alabama that might not wind up in this class. There are guys committed elsewhere who could wind up committing to Alabama. Uh, De Ricky Wright is a guy who uh, you and I really both like as an athlete, a tremendous, tremendous tall, lean athlete. Not sure position wise where he'll play in college. Uh, played at Etowah, transferred to Gadsden City, but he decommitted um, and now has committed to Ole Miss. Is that strictly just a case of, of him looking at those numbers and saying to himself, man, I, this is going to be a tough go for me? Could have been. I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I haven't really talked to to Derricky Wright since that decision. But you look at him. He's, you know, he, he's listed six four two twenty. You know, whether he's six four, I'm not real sure. But I know one thing: he is an athletic playmaker on defense. And the question to me was, and again, I, I who knows what Alabama was thinking. But to me, um, I felt like that here's a guy with that size, probably outgrowing the safety position, maybe be a backer. And now with all the linebackers you've got, maybe he thought, you know, maybe someone told him, hey, listen, you know, you go there, this is what you're facing, you come here, you know, you're going to have a great opportunity to start early, play early, whatever it is. I always thought he also was athletic enough and had great hands uh, to play maybe on offense as, as an H-back type guy as he continued to grow. But, you know, again, uh, he's, he's committed to Ole Miss now and uh, an outstanding prospect, I think. All right, uh, I got a, just got a message, a text message, so, and, and I ask you this every week anyway, but I'll ask again because somebody wants me to, and I am curious myself. Uh, got a message that said to ask Rodney about quarterbacks. Uh, again, I, I told you this on the television show and on the radio. If I'm Alabama with, with Talia and with Tyson uh, just being freshmen, uh, I, obviously I think Tua is going to go uh, after after the season, but – I, I don't take a quarterback unless it's just somebody that I've really got targeted. I, that's just the way I'm looking at these numbers. But quarterback wise for Alabama in this 2020 class, what's the latest? Well, listen, I, I think you're right in terms of you don't just take somebody to take somebody uh, to fill a spot uh, because the spots are, are very few and precious. So I think you have to make sure you get the guy you want. You remember a few a couple of years ago, they passed on Brock Purdy, and look what he did at Iowa State. Uh, so there are guys out there they're looking at. Now, I really think they've got a great shot at Bryce Young out of California, the five-star player. Now, that's as of now. Uh, you know, he's committed to USC, obviously. I think Helton could be on shaky ground out there. Uh, if, you know, if you listen just – speculating okay you listen to chatter if helton doesn't make it uh that could certainly really open the door for alabama but what if they hired urban meyer all that stuff's going out there but right now if you just look at as it added as it is uh, i still think that with helton there at usc having him committed i still think alabama's in great position with him because i think that when, when, when he looks at this situation and he sees there's a big difference between you know, what Alabama's doing right now, what USC's doing, direction of the program, opportunity that he might have. I, I just think that uh, Alabama's in a in a good position with him as of today. Now, again, I, I always say this, it's six months away, Gary. This signing day is still six months away. Yeah, it is. <laughs> like I said, it's a fluid situation. I, I get that. Uh, Roy Dell Williams is committed. I, I think he's uh, a tremendous running back out of Hueytown. And I think he's going to be a terrific player here. But we know 
at Alabama, you you want as many of those good running backs as you can get, and we've seen why in the past. Uh, numbers can change there in a hurry. Alabama's going to sign at least more one more running back, if not two in this class. They're involved with the top guys out there, Rodney. What's, uh, what's the latest update on running back? Well, you know, they had two five-stars in over the last few days. They had uh, the kid committed to um, Oklahoma out of Alito, Texas, Chase McClellan. And they had also uh, the kid out of California, the five-star from Clovis, California, Kendall Milton. Yeah, I've I've felt for a couple of weeks now that Milton would probably end up at Georgia. I still feel that way, you know, as of today, unless I hear something differently. Uh, Because I think he's, Del McGee's done a really good job with him, and they've been kind of pounding on him a lot. Uh, I really think Georgia would like to have Zachary Evans out of the Houston area, who I think right now is, to me, is, appears to be strongly leaning to Alabama. Uh, and I think he's probably the best running back in the country. I know he's rated that. He's one of the best ones I've seen in a while, I think, the last few years. And I think the kid out of the committed to Oklahoma is, is right there, too, Jace McClellan, uh, who was here this past weekend. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, obviously, they're in on those three, and you know, if they can land one of those to go with Roy Dale Williams, who – just crazy because he, he's so vastly underrated. I, I think when you talk about, okay, he's a four star, but at the same time, I mean, he doesn't really kind of get the chatter. I think he, he probably is worthy of, uh, but, uh, he's a great back too, to me. Yeah, absolutely. When you look at Alabama, um, coming off the loss to, to Clemson, uh, 44, 16, we don't have to, to beat that horse anymore, but there was a lot of chatter that Clemson had passed Alabama, Clemson was the it program, you know, Alabama was reeling, more coaching changes, you know, is it the end of the dynasty? And I said this earlier with Scott Moore, Rodney, I, I, if this is the end, then my gosh, I mean, what an end. I mean, obviously nobody's told these high school uh, recruits that because they're they're knocking down the doors to try to get in yeah. here in Tuscaloosa. I mean, I, I, don't see, I don't see where anything's changed. At Alabama, if anything, Nick Saban's amped it up even more, Rodney. Yeah, look, certainly looks like it. I think he's got a staff in place that he seems to really comfortable with now. I think, and in, in both on the field and uh, in recruiting, for the most part. And then, you know, Gary, we haven't even mentioned guys like Philip Webb, who may be the best outside linebacker in the country from Buford, Georgia. Uh, he certainly should be a five star. I don't know what they've got him ready probably for, but. He, sh- he should be a five-star. I think Darnell Washington, five-star tight end. I mean, guys like that, We you know, we could go down the list and continue to talk about guys that they're in on. They have a chance to finish with down the stretch, and it could be just an incredible, you know, certainly an incredible recruiting class. But to your point about Clemson and all of that, and you know, um, was it 2014, Urban Meyer was the, the king of college football, right? Mm-hmm. When he sure beat was. Nick Saban. Yep. And and he was challenging Saban. He had overtaken Saban. It was done. It was pretty much over. You know, Urban was going to win five or six more national championships, and he hasn't done it, anything yet, and he's out of coaching. So, you know, a lot of stuff people talk, but the one thing that remains constant is Nick Saban in Alabama. There's no doubt. It's, it's I, I'm I'm just I'm in awe watching <laughs> this transition from what happened in the national championship game to where Alabama's right now. Hey, listen, I want to ask you, and, I, and you know, I love the guy. I mean, I can't help it. And, and listen, it's a position coach. Uh, Alabama's got a strong staff. They, they brought in some veteran coaches, but sometimes I do think one guy can, can tilt things in your favor. I think Sal Sonseri is that kind of guy, Rodney. I mean, not only with what he can do on the field with those outside linebacker defensive end types, his ability to relate to players on the recruiting trail. Uh, of course you got Vinny and Tino, his two sons here on this staff. I think this was one of the most important hires, getting Sal Sinceri back that, that Nick Saban's made. Uh, your reaction to that, is: am I making too much out of Sal Sinceri, or is he as important to this staff both on and off the field as I perceive him to be? Well, you know, we've talked about it many times. I, I feel like he's a huge addition to this uh, coaching staff. Huge. And you mentioned Dino and, and Vinny. I thought that those two guys uh, being here too are are really big. I think that they're both have extremely bright futures. No question about that. Um, but yeah, South Sinceri, given his experience with Nick Saban in the system, he's won a couple of national championships here, been a part of those. Uh, tremendous 
coach. Uh, the players are in awe of him. Uh, they respect him. They listen to him, and they respond to him. And it's not just uh, – he's pretty hard on them. You can watch it on the practice field. You can hear it. You can see it. But, uh, and, but they respect him. And I think that's something that was really needed, um, you know, on that side of the ball a little bit. So he brings that. Um, but he's fair to them, too. So that's why they respect him. All right, lastly – Oh, I'm sorry, right? I think Charles Kelly, too. Yes. I don't want to, you know, I, I think uh, he's big. I think Pete Golding is is a budding guy that's going to be really, really good as well. And so I, I think the defense, um, I think right now they'll be, I guess you could say they'll be on the same page this year, and that'll be really important. Oh, I'm with you. I think the, the defensive staff is an upgrade over what, you know, they had last year. Finally, uh, Scott Cochran's active on social media and, um, you know, could have gone to Georgia a few years ago, looked like he might go with Kirby Smart. He didn't. His impact on this program, to have the same strength and conditioning coach in place the entire time that Nick Saban has been here, to have the kind of trust that he has from Coach Saban and the job he does in the offseason to mold this team and get them ready for fall camp and the season to come. Uh I think it's huge, don't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's invaluable. You know, so I've heard some people say, refer to him as the foundation of it. You know, uh, you mentioned the trust that Saban can have. I mean, he can basically turn it over to Scott Cochran and doesn't have to worry about that aspect of it uh, because he motivates, uh, he prepares, he develops, he transforms a lot of these guys when they get here, uh, not only physically, but the way they think. In that weight room, that's where it starts. I mean, you know, that's the tough, that's the mental part of it. That's where the grind is, I think, you know, for a lot of these guys. That's where it's established. So I think, you know, having Scott Cochran in place like that, uh, it's just just invaluable, and he's been a you know big part of it. Finally, Ronnie, just a thought on, on Dr. Don Sauls. He's turning 100. They're having a birthday party for him this afternoon at the Bryant Museum. And like 25, 30 years ago, he, he, wrote, a, he, he wrote a book called Unlock Your Body's Long life potential, live and love to be 100. 160 natural ways to reverse the aging process and live a longer, more vital life. Uh, you know, I talk a lot about health and wellness. I have not read that book. I'm going to get that book because he knew when he was 70 he was going to live to be 100. So obviously this yeah. guy knows what he's talking about, right? Yeah, I, 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 that's interesting. If you get a copy of it, I want one too. I'm going to uh, get us a couple. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, because in, in happy birthday to Don Salt. All right, TyrerInsider.com is, uh, is rocking and rolling. Even when I was on vacation, I... I checked in a couple of times, and uh, as we've said before, uh, that forum never takes a day off. <laughs> no, it really doesn't. Titerinsider.com, it's only $48 a year. You can get access with your credit card and or if you prefer a check. And that you talked about the premium information, but also the uh, stuff on the forum, the information exchange and all of that. But, but, you know, Gary, hopefully today I think we'll probably get a lot of insight on some of the things moving forward in recruiting. Hope to have a big update later today on that so tighterinsider.com it never really stops all right thanks a lot rod take care